coming up on MedWatch today, providing health care and hope to the homeless. That is the goal of the Fresno Rescue Mission, community medical centers, and their partners in creating the Respite Care Center. See inside the program that is giving the homeless a better place to heal and recover after they leave the hospital. And coming together to support one another after head and neck cancers. Fighting each kind of cancer is unique. That's why this group of patients proves that being headstrong is helping them heal. That's coming up. And expecting moms, listen up. What medical experts say to be sure and remember while packing your hospital bag and what items you should leave at home. We go through the packing list for your hospital bag. Are you ready for your trip? Find out still ahead. Hi there, and thanks so much for joining us. I'm your host, Stephanie Bainham. While it is the season of giving, giving is something the Fresno Rescue Mission does year round. And with their partners at community medical centers and other area hospitals, they've built a respite care center. It's a place where people can heal after they leave the hospital when they have nowhere else to go. It's an incredible place that helps people get their lives back on track. And we got to check it out. On G Street in downtown Fresno sits the recognizable Fresno Rescue Mission. 68 years, the premier social service agency to the least, the last, and the lost, 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. Pastor Rob Cravey is at the helm of the mission, a place known for their recovery programs and getting homeless men and women off the streets and back into society. What is less known, however, is their respite care center, which was built with the help of community medical centers and other area hospitals with a clear goal in mind. For those who were homeless who were being discharged from the hospitals, we didn't want to see anyone walking down the street, uh, down the sidewalk in a gown, uh, in a wheelchair, rolling themselves um, out into a field, or, or watching someone who had just completed surgery go back into a tent. Um, because you and I have a home to go to, to recover, and people who uh, live outside then have to go back outside into the dirt to recover, and that's not a healthy thing. The Respite Care Center has 13 beds for patients, with men and women being cared for by Community's Home Health Program. One of those beds is being occupied by Ronnie Arana, who suffered stab wounds while living out on the streets. Uh, the doctors were, were, were ready to uh, to, to release me, I didn't have nowhere to go, and so um, they told me that I can, uh, that there's a place where I can come. And it's something Ronnie says he does not take for granted. It is a real blessing. Um, it, uh, it made me happy um, that that I actually have somewhere to go, and 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 just not, um, you know, uh, just put me out on the streets. And so it's a real, this is a real blessing for me. A blessing that the Fresno Rescue Mission says is the right thing to do. Well, we're not just here for the homeless. Um, we're here for our community as a whole, and we're benefiting the hospitals. So first and foremost, it's something the hospitals need. And we have shelter that provides to it, and we also have a heart for it. And our ultimate goal is to watch them go from respite into our case management. A transition from patient to a productive member of society by offering them not only shelter, warmth, and health care, but also hope. We are in it, cold season. And it's often the kids who bring home a bug from school or daycare. And parents will sometimes go to their doctors and think that antibiotics will make their kids feel better. But we talked to pediatrician Veronica Ramirez, who says that's not always the case. Dr. Ramirez, thanks so much for joining us today. Thanks for having me. And we're here at your office to talk about kids and antibiotics. What are some misconceptions out there that you want to help clear up? That is an excellent question. Um, we are embarking on cold and flu season, and lots of parents come in worried about 
the stuffy nose, the runny nose, the cough, uh, disrupted sleep, and I think it's important for people to know that the majority of the time these illnesses are caused by viruses. Um, and viruses, we actually don't have any medicines uh, that will make them go away. They need to run their course, uh -huh. and antibiotics are not indicated for viruses that cause cold symptoms. So when would you need antibiotics for your kids? <clears throat> you know, the duration of a typical cold is anywhere from like seven to ten days, sometimes a little bit longer. And what we look at is the entire clinical picture. Um, indications that maybe this has become something else or a bacterial infection for which antibiotics are indicated might be uh, prolonged fever, mm -hmm. um, symptoms getting worse or lasting longer than 10, you know, 10 to 14 days, um, and certain things like ear infections, and depending on the age of the child and how severe the ear looks, might indicate whether or not antibiotics are necessary. Thank you, Dr. Ramirez, for your time today and your expertise, and thank you so much. Thanks for having me. Thanks. Coming up on MedWatch Today. New guidelines from the American Heart Association are lowering the threshold for high blood pressure. Hear what the new numbers are and if that means you are now considered to have high blood pressure. Find out next in our health headlines.